the next lecture will be from Mai Geisen. Mai is an iconic here at the German Sport University. She's working at the Institute for Exercise, Training and Sports Informatics. And she's currently doing her PhD here. She has a bachelor degree in applied kinesiology and a master degree in psychology and sport and exercise. And in her free time, she's dancing hip hop choreography. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you Sophie, for the um, nice introduction. Um, I'm very happy to be here today, um, especially also to hear these interesting presentations and also talk myself about. Uh, two topics that I love, um, so research and dance. Um, today I want to um, tell you a bit more about an innovative method for technical motion precision that me and my colleagues have um, developed um, for the field of dance, but not yet um, tested it into, uh, in breaking. And so this is something we want to do um, in the future in cooperation with uh, Claudia and Sophie. So my talk today is also a bit something where you can think about and of course also give us uh, suggestions because this is something you want to um, research in the future. Okay, so as a short introduction into the topic, um, motion technique, I guess this is uh, something everyone knows here is the central evaluation criterion of the jury scoring system and breaking. And in order to obtain information about the open motion um, technique, feedback is needed, which influences the learning process and also supports motor skill acquisition. So in sports and especially also in breaking, motion can, technique can then be analyzed based on the feedback uh, on the one hand with regard to optimizing the sports performance, but also on the other hand, and I guess this is something we um, talked about a lot in the last presentations to prevent injury. So, um, as a state of research specifically um, to visual feedback in sports learning, um, this is often done via um, 2D video recordings uh, today and also um, about the own uh, motion techniques, so information is given on the own motion. Of course, this is beneficial in training, and this is also why it is uh, conducted. However, it also has some limitations because these video recordings are missing three dimensionality, and also information only on the own motion technique is often less specific um, and uh, precise information. So, there are some opportunities based on the digital era, especially um, that can overcome these limitations uh, because it can. Um, increase or it, it has increasing technolo technological possibilities um, and there are also approaches to discrepancy information. I will also come to that in the next slide. So especially the digital era um, involves to um, enable precise motion capturing via motion capture, so in short mocap. Um, so here on the right hand side you can see um, some, yeah, camera solutions, and I guess this is also something that uh, later on um, today you can experience yourself. So the upper picture shows how it can be um, set up in a room, and the lower picture shows one single camera that we have um, already also uh, used in uh, our studies in our institute. And also extended reality, in short XR, um, can be uh, used as feedback and this extends or replaces the physical world with um, virtual information. So, in uh, terms of approaches to discrepancy information, there are already existing methods for visualization of this discrepancy information. So, to compare an actual and a target value, so let's say actual value can be something um, a learner does and target um, something the coach or also an expert in the field um, does. So this can be uh, given by a video superimposition, and this is already done in other domains, so also other sports, or also in the field of medicine, for example, so um, to really superimpose two um, videos. So the aims in research and practice would be the visualization of actual target um, comparison, 
that can be enabled via an innovative uh, feedback method for technical motion precision and here especially to transfer that in the field of braking. So as a preliminary work, um, we have uh, worked on a study that I will now tell you a bit more about. Um, so here we have um, used basic dance and fitness moves. So as we said, I'm an, a hip hop dancer, um, but we have chosen yeah, really basic moves that are also um, used in hip hop. So of course for the field of breaking this needs to be adapted. Um, so here, uh, participants had to learn a one-minute motion choreography that existed of 25 um, exercises and they learned the motions by a large screen projection. So here our aim was to conduct a study um, that in which uh, participants learn motions based on uh, videos as it is also done in uh, via YouTube, for example. So also a very big field, um, I guess, that uh, came through COVID um, and now is yeah, uh, really increasing. And the motion sequence was choreographed by a coach and also captured by a mocap camera. So here again, you can see the single uh, camera that we used, or actually we used two of these uh, cameras, uh, which is a Microsoft uh, Kinect camera. And the feedback was given by a motion superimposition, as I said, based on this discrepancy approach. We have done it in real time, however, in breaking, I will also come to that later on, uh, I would suggest to do that after the performance. Um, and here um, we have compared the actual target value based on the motion of the coach um, and each participant. So in the study, we um, conducted the motion and execution, executions with the 27 participants uh, divided into different learning groups and the motion was captured for training, so also to have the motion of the participants um, and be able to uh, superimpose these motions with uh, the motions of the coaches and of course also for performance measurement, so to find out the pre, mid and uh, post-test uh, performance of the participants. We have done a descriptive data analysis via visualization, so we have basically used the same method as in training, so the superimposition um, for analysis, and we have done that for 25 poses that were derived from these 25 exercises. So we have done a video annotation done by um, two persons. Um, I will not really go into detail here because it's um, I guess a bit too complicated to tell that in the presentation now, but um, in general we have focused on the temporal motion precision and on the spatial motion precision, which of course is um, both um, uh, important in a dance choreography. So um, uh, we have, um, a, in terms of the spatial motion adaptation, uh, focused on the angular degree, which was um, the average from the elbow, shoulder, hip and knee angles. And we have then always frame by frame annotated these videos in order to find out how the motion of the participant was compared to the coach's motion. And then we have created these visualizations of the spatial motion adaptation also via superimposition, as I said. And here we could um, also provide the Euclidean angular differences in millimeter. We will also see that later on, um, which is the um, distance between two joint positions that you can directly see on one um, 2D image. So going into the methods, these uh, different learning groups that we had. One learning group, as I said, it was a study um, that was um, a bit like a YouTube tutorial. So the first group has had the most conventional methods, so they only saw the coach's motion. Then the second group saw the coach's motion and also the own motion next to it, so as if, to, uh, as if they would have um, learned also by um, seeing their own motion um, in a mirror. And the next one was more innovative already, so we then superimposed these two videos, as I said, which was already um, done before in research, and finally then the most innovative method there in order to also really develop this three-dimensionality and also more importantly even to um, body proportionally adapt the um, coach's motion to each participant. 
we then um, yeah, developed this, these virtual skeletons. So here you can see this participant was um, quite tall, so we had to adapt the coach's motion to this uh, participant um, in that way, and then um, also uh, showed these, uh, the level of um, deviation, basically, of these two motions based on the um, yellow ha uh, highlights that got bigger the more deviation there was. So here, um, today I will show you one example pose um, as a result. So here a squad with um, raised arms, or at least one raised arm. Um, and uh, you can see the blue skeleton is always the same, which was the uh, motion pose of the instructor or the coach. Um, then the yellow skeletons show the average subjects per group, and each gray skeleton is each individual uh, subject. And here, is, as you can see, group A um, first even had more deviation in the uh, mid-test um, compared to the pre-test. So here we interpret that as um, uh, familiarization, that uh, this is needed in order to then really um, adapt to this innovative method because yeah it's really new to them but then in the end they uh, could improve their motion and this was also um, more compared to the other groups so here you can see that all these skeletons are almost fully um, superimposed so um, this for us is an initial indication for successful implementation of this innovative method um, for technical motion precision, but as I said, of course, um, familiarization is uh, probably needed um, also not only for this innovative method, but for innovative methods in general, because it's always new to learners um, in order to then really uh, yeah, have this precision effect. So um, interesting for you now, or more interesting for you, is uh, the transfer to braking. So, here, um, this innovative me method could be given as feedback after performance. Um, this is, compared to our study, um, important because, of course, in breaking, you cannot always look at a screen because you have so many turns and uh, different um, motions. Um, and this uh, first study was yeah, more of these basic motions. So here, you can pre-capture both the actual and target value and this could be also a coach and um, a learner, but of course it could also be a comparison of your own previous motion with your um, current motion. So these, uh, the definition of the actual and target value could of course be very different. And then in cooperation with our colleagues here, um, we uh, of course want to uh, have an enhanced mocap technology in the future and not only use these single cameras, um, so we yeah, would like to conduct that uh, here in the Institute of Dance and Movement Culture. And um, it could be the breaking experts compared to national and state sport athletes. But as I said, of course, the innovative method is not only for this uh, specific um, group. And um, in the end, the aim would be a long-term integration of uh, innovative digital methods um, into the field of breaking in general, because um, and this, I think, is very important. We want to promote the sport of breaking in the same way that other Olympic sports are promoted. Um, also today, it was said a lot that, of course, this is a very unique sport, and uh, it cannot be compared to other sports, but um, it should at least have the same uh, yeah, chance to get promoted and uh, also um, experience um, yeah, all these possibilities of innovation. So, thank you very much. And if you have questions or suggestions, has anybody some questions or want to ask something? Yeah, Hannah? Uh, I just wanted to say that I think that will be a wonderful uh, contribution in injury prevention because I feel that some athletes uh, uh, look at uh, a move and then perform it, but not as it should be. And then they have like uh, not normal pattern of doing a move. 
which might pose a risk to an overuse system, uh, in the injury or to, you know. Um, yeah. uh, so I think when they look at themselves and see the analysis, they might have a chance to correct those uh, wrong patterns and change them into good patterns and then reduce the risk. So, wonderful job. <laughs> yeah, and I think also for this, uh, you could of course then focus on very specific body parts. You, um, like here in, in our study, we have always focused on the full body motion, but of course uh, with these uh, digital possibilities and also especially the virtual presentations, um, you could always then pick one specific motion part, um, show that larger, let's say on the big screen, um, of course, also so show it in slow motion because this is also, I think, a very important um, thing to, yeah, in terms of the transfer to breaking or into sports in general. Because in this study, we have, uh, yeah, chosen motions. Uh, uh, we have, yeah, chosen motions that can be um, where you can see the visual presentation, visual representations uh, in real time. So it had to be um, rather slow uh, motion executions, but of course, when you transfer it and also show it not in real time, but as a delayed feedback, then you could then also show it um, yeah, in slow motion, also specific body parts, and then really focus on specific, um, yeah, interest. so thank you for the input. Okay, anybody else? Hi, thank you very much for the great uh, paper. Um, uh, I'm just doing some quite similar to music. I'm a musicologist and I'm uh, into flow studies. That means to an analyze uh, rhythm and rhymes in uh, rap music. And uh, um, uh, but I, I would just want to um, um, to say that you have to be aware. I myself have to be aware that some things are possible to show in this analysis, but some not. Yeah. So yeah, um, you can't um, um, show expression, for instance, yeah. or the the relation between music and motion, for instance, or maybe in future research. But um, I think that's always the, the problem with um, giving uh, to translating body into other signs or music into notes or music into waves for instance then you change something i yeah. think your picture of motion changed the, the thing i think i think that's very important for being accepted by the hip-hop scene i think because many many People or MCs at the first um, glance are a little bit critical when, when I say uh, I'm analyzing the, the flow of Eminem or Sammy Deluxe. And you, I think it's a difference between the dance and the picture you give it. Yeah, yeah. I think also, especially in the field of dance, um, of course, motion technique is also important, but maybe other things are more important than in other sports you know what i mean so of course it is also a field in this sport but you should probably be aware of other um, things such, such as expression um, that you um, that probably are not that relevant in other sports so here you really have to be aware of not only focusing on the uh, precision and not only presenting uh, virtual elements where you cannot see the face, for instance, uh, then you probably also in the future need to go more into the um, field of avatar presentations. Um, this is something we have not done yet, so these virtual skeletons are really like, um, yeah, they, they have no emotion. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, yeah, that's about emotion yeah. or it's about energy or yeah. it's about style. And maybe um, if you put your hands like this and not like that, it's exactly that what your teacher wanted to, to show you, yeah. but you, you did, did it on your style, and, and it's exactly the emotion you wanted to show it. So, thank you. Any other question, or just want to add something to the discussion? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Mark.